Hello and welcome back to this series on Python and TensorFlow and Keras and neural networks all for DH. In the last video, we looked at validation, testing, and loss, and we saw that our neural networks were trained on testing, sorry, on training and validation data sets, and then they were tested with testing data. And we looked at the role of loss in that training process. In this video, we're going to be talking about a new concept, prediction. I've mentioned prediction a couple times in past videos, but we're going to see what prediction is and why it is useful. Prediction will look something like this when we run our neural network against unseen data. It will look at the data, in this case a sentence, and then make a prediction on what that sentence is. If we are dealing with a binary text classification model, it is going to output a result that looks like this, a tuple, and that tuple will consist of two things. The first bit of information will be the actual prediction, and the second bit of information will be the prediction on what item of data, in this case, a sentence. And here we have a reconstructed sentence from the numerical array. In my Python uh, video tutorial series on creating a binary text classification model, I'm going to show you how to do a simple reverse word index to reconstitute a numerical array back into its original string. For now, let's focus on this first item, the index zero. This is a prediction. Now here are a bunch of random tests on a lot of Dan Brown texts. And what we'd expect to see from a model is a bunch of very close to the number one, which is Dan Brown, and a lot of information that is very far away from the number zero, which is Oscar Wilde. As you can see, and you will see in the video, I have several different results to demonstrate how to modify a neural network to have more accurate results. This is one that's in the middle ground. So what we see here is a model that is okay, but not great. And if we look at this, we can see some preliminary information. So we can see that in this sentence right here, it has correctly identified that this is Dan Brown based on only two pieces of information, two words, hurry and miss. For whatever reason, this neural network has identified that these two words, perhaps in this specific order or what have you, are very likely to be Dan Brown. It is quite possible that the word hurry doesn't appear anywhere in the Oscar Wilde training data. And if we scroll down, we'll see that certain things allow for it to be more precise and for really easy to understand reasons. If we look down here on line 40, we see a prediction value of one. So this is the neural network saying, I am 100% sure that this right here, this is Dan Brown. If we look at the sentence in question, we can easily see why. Even though there was only two pieces of information, two words in this sentence, we can see that the word Langdon is present. Now, the word Langdon is a reference to the main character in the book Origin and only occurs in the Dan Brown training data. It is, therefore, very easy to understand why this particular uh, sentence test has a prediction value of 1. In other instances, we see that our prediction is really wrong. So a prediction value of 0 0.0212, etc., is a prediction value very close to zero. And therefore, our neural network is saying this is very likely going to be Oscar Wilde. And of course, we know that it's not. This is why this is testing data. And we can explore why it's getting confused here, but possibly it's because of the way our training data uh, was presented to the neural network and how it was trained. So this combination of words or these particular words might appear quite frequently in Oscar Wilde. But if you notice going all the way through, we see consistently this prediction give us a number. Now this number, if you're familiar with uh, how data works and numerical data, is a float. A float is a fancy way of saying floating number or a decimal point. And it's a decimal point because it's trying to identify a number between zero and one. The closer to one, the more higher confidence in the prediction that what we are looking at is in fact Dan Brown, and the closer to zero, the more higher the higher the confidence that what we're looking at is Oscar Wilde. So that is what prediction is, and that is what a neural network is trying to do. It's trying to identify certain key pieces of information with a prediction value. As we look at multi-class text classification, we'll have prediction values for each different item 
in a um, in a a class, a set of classes. For now, though, we're just going to be working with binary text classification and only have this one prediction value. The prediction value is also useful for the training process. If we remember from the last video, we remember that the loss was the degree to which the neural network was incorrect. It was being able to figure out the loss based on its prediction value and the degree to which it, the prediction value differed from the actual answer. So this is how a prediction value is used during the training process. Now that's going to be it for this video. If you are still a little confused on how prediction works and what prediction is, I promise you it is going to make more sense when we start doing this in practice and actually training neural networks. That's going to be it for this video though, but in the next video we are going to start looking at the types of neural networks that exist. And we're going to discuss these neural networks very, very generally, just so you can kind of see some of the different architectures that are out there and why certain architectures are used to solve certain problems. And then in the next two videos, we're going to look at TensorFlow and Keras a little more closely. That's going to be it for now, though. Thank you for listening. And if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe down below.